I grew up on the beautiful black soils in Illinois where corn was king. Nothing tasted like summer like fresh sweet corn. Corn takes a lot of nutrients and needs a rich soil. So corn often follows beans in the rotations. These are October beans that are bringing in nitrogen from the air with their symbiotic relationship with the soil bacteria and they're really good for building soil for a crop that takes a lot of fertility. A winter cover crop of crimson clover, another legume, along with 10 loads of biodynamic compost, got our corn ground in good shape. The sheer mass of organic matter in a corn patch can really build good soil. Corn is truly a miracle. From a lowly grass, Native Americans developed and bred the corn that we use now, far surpassing the small grains that our ancestors in the old world were working with, wheat, barley, rye, and oats. Modern day plant breeders and scientists have no clue how the Native Americans accomplished this. First, we make furrows of inch or two deep, about three and a half feet apart. Then into these furrows, we drop the corn seed, oh, about eight or 10 inches apart. And then we step on it and firm it into the ground. Seeds need to be really tightly touching the soil so that they can absorb the moisture in the soil, swell up and sprout. Then we go back over the rows and we just kind of do the duck walk and cover them up. We like to plant our corn and all of our direct seeded crops before a dry spell, never before rain. The humus rich soil will have enough moisture to sprout the seeds anyway and we like to go over the rows three days later with our rake. This destroys weeds that are sprouting right on the surface, but is not gonna bother our corn kernels that are deeper down. Then when they sprout up, they have a head start on those pesky weeds. As soon as our corn sprouts out of the ground, we're busy cultivating. We have to keep that soil surface loose and friable because that's what conserves our soil moisture. Water in the soil will wick out through capillary action, but we can prevent that by keeping the soil surface cultivated. So we're continually cultivating our soil, but not only to conserve moisture, we're bringing in the all important air that has the gases of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide that help to feed the soil microbes and our plants. On our last cultivation, we pull the soil up to, well, beans or corn or whatever we're growing. And by hilling it, we're again, conserving moisture. And in the case of corn, we're actually helping the corn to withstand blowing over from those July thunderstorms. Green corn stalks have sugar in them, and I take advantage of this. After the last ear is pulled off, I immediately mow the patch and disc it into the soil. This feeds the soil microbes who then proliferate and improve the land. The main pest in sweet corn is raccoons. We use an electric fence a few inches off the ground to keep the raccoons from ravaging our corn patch. When we plant our sweet corn, I oftentimes put a pile of shelled corn near the field. Crows who are pretty pesky about going down the row and getting the kernel out of the newly sprouted corn will just go to that pile of corn that's on top of the ground because it's easier to get. And by the time that's gone, my corn is past the point where they can be troublesome. Japanese beetles sometimes get into the silks, but they don't bother me because the birds that come by to eat the beetles oftentimes get the corn earworm out of there too. 
sweet corn is always grown in a patch so that it pollinates better. It doesn't make full ears if it's grown in single rows. After one of my master gardener's talks, an old friend came up to me and handed me a big sack of sweet corn seed. It was open pollinated corn that he'd been saving for 35 years. He had got the seed on our farm at a conference we had had way back then in the 80s. With open pollinated corn, we can save our seed from year to year, like my friend Daryl had been doing. So we have flagged a lot of the stalks in here that have two ears and the ears are nice looking and the plants are healthy. With the hybrid sweet corn, we don't save the seed. It won't come true. Hybrid sweet corn may be sweeter and yield more, but the old fashioned flavor of this old timey open pollinated corn is summer at its best. It's good eating. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.